What's happening guys? Silent Mike back with another rendition of Fix Your Form. If you are new, this is where I take subscribers and followers form and I give you guys some free coaching. If you want to get involved, we need 70% for triples. Film horizontally and email to ask m-i-k-k-e at gmail.com if any of you are interested in more hands-on real coaching we do offer some group coaching from kaizentraining.com uh, as well as all my programs and philosophies are there um, some free programs some affordable programs some ebooks some information so check out kaizentraining.com if you guys want to get more informed get on a plan and make some gains uh, start with my mans here i'm not a huge fan of the deficit i'd like to see something uh, more competition style but that being said, my friend, uh, your form is really, really solid. Uh, you kind of have a build to pull big weights. He gets into a really good position. Um, shin's fairly vertical, which isn't necessarily good nor bad, um, but because of his length in his arms and his uh, mobility, plus his torso is quite small, um, maybe not small, but short, uh, he can get his hips in a very low position, some tension in the hamstrings and glutes, and still pull. Uh, to be honest, if you can get into that same position, uh, if not even a better position, and still have tension off in your hamstrings off the floor, um, your form's really, really good, man. Uh, what I do uh, see with some people that are less experienced is a deficit can help them lift more weight. And you guys are saying, Mike, but that's uh, under loud. It's uh, further range of motion. It's way more difficult. Uh, this is all true, but often for the, uh, the newbie, um, pulling off a deficit uh, creates a false sense of tightness. And so then when they're going off the ground, they can't handle the same amount of loads. It forces you, um, your midsection, your hamstrings and glutes to get tight. So I'd like to see it off the ground. Another really good pull. Uh, this angle is a little weird. I think we have another one coming up. Um, you know, if you want to lift with straps, by all means, I'm a big fan of straps myself. Uh, but for these videos, grip would help because sometimes those uh, can be issues. Uh, right off the bat, I think we can get our lats a little bit tighter and watch that bend in the elbow. So I think about flexing my tricep on the pull. Um, that way I just don't have any um, chance of my bicep getting involved at all. Number two, I'm not a huge fan of the touch and go, uh, and I know some big lifters have gotten away with it, some, some very, very top lifters do it. Uh, for the majority of people, I say a full reset. If not, check out my last video that dropped two days ago. You guys should be subscribed and notifications on so you don't miss a video. Uh, and check out the Ed Cohn style deadlifter. What I learned from Ed Cohn, I go into detail of how I think the majority of people can uh, lift best with uh, kind of a, a, a slow eccentric controlled um, reset slash touch and go. Uh, everything looks pretty dang solid though, my man. Uh, what I try to do is get those elbows pointing towards your hips or behind you. Uh, and the best way to do that is you will be bending that bar around your shins. Uh, so you kind of torque the bar similar that we would in a bench press uh, around your legs. The other thing I'd say, straps or no straps, is I would try to get those hands in a little bit more. Uh, you see a lot of space between your hands and your legs. Uh, and and again, some people do pull this way, but to reduce range of motion and allow yourself to be a little bit more compact, um, getting those as close as possible. Now, you see around your knees, um, the weight not only gets in front of you just a hair, but then also you can see the weight bobble on your feet. Uh, squat and the deadlift, at all times, we want to be pushing our foot into the ground as hard as we can, and we want uh, three, if not four, if not all points of contact. So many coaches say, Big, uh, big toe, little toe, and heel in full contact. But I like to think about really spreading my foot and really growing roots into the ground and planting my entire foot into the ground. Uh, obviously, this will help with balance, uh, but I, I think it helps recruit and balance uh, use of as many muscles as you can. Man, we got some solid deadlifts today, team. Uh, I'm stoked on this video. This deadlift, too. Uh, you know, so far, we're all, you know, four and a half, five star pullers. Uh, on that last rep right there, I could see your uh, body weight flush forward just a hair. Uh, from this angle, uh, the only thing I'd, I'd say is I would experiment with a more narrow stance. Uh, you can see your knees try to force in because of your grip. Rather than just move your stance in a little bit and get those knees right over your midfoot. Your back, your lats... You tighten it up all really well. Um, the only other thing then is that you're forcing your knees forward, which even right there in the slow-mo, you can see the barbell move forward. Uh, rather than I'd like to see you force your hips back and get your body weight back a little more. Um, so you can see in the slow-mo for everybody, your hips will end up in the position that they want to pull in as the bar is moving the ground. So if your hips are too low, your hips will rise first and then the bar. Um, 
it's not always bad. There Again, there are many lifters that get away with this and, and lift just fine. But um, to be more efficient, why not just have your hips in that position and get them falling backwards? Um, get your weight falling backwards, more tension in the hamstrings, hips a hair higher, uh, and then you'll pull immediately off the ground. So a slightly narrower stance. Uh, keep that grip kind of where it is. You might be able to scoot it in as you move the stance in. Uh, hips just maybe an inch higher and start to force them backwards. Uh, but overall, really, really, really solid work, team. It's like you guys have been watching my videos or something and learning some shits. Excuse me, learning some stuff. Uh, YouTube gets a little upset when you curse at them. They demonetize for anything. Um, from this angle, again, uh, really, really good pull. Really solid. Uh, honestly, uh, not much I would change. I would say experiment again. Everybody can get their weight falling back a little bit. You can see your chest is a little bit over the bar and you can see the load, the weight um, being taken into your low back where you want that low back just to be a stabilizer. So breathing and bracing as hard as you can and get your weight falling back so we can really hinge off those hamstrings. The other thing I would say is just experiment with dropping that chin a little bit. Um, it's not going to, you know, your neck's not going to explode. You're not going to break your back by hyperextending a little bit. Uh, I do believe most optimal most of the time is a neutral spine, which means our neck, our back, lower back, all of that is going to be in, an, in, in a fairly straight line. Um, a little bit of curvature obviously is natural in the back. And even in the neck, our neck is made to move. Um, but under load, sometimes it can strain a little bit. But the main thing is that often I find your hips or even your knees uh, will move a little bit differently based on where your head position is. So you, my friend, I would try dropping your chin, tucking it in a little bit and dropping your eyes uh, probably about 10, 15 feet in front of you on the ground choose a spot drop that chin drop those eyes get those weight falling back um, and everything else is really really solid team uh, it's exciting to see this stuff i love seeing people um, not only progress in strength which is obviously everyone's goal they want to look better they want to lift more weight but to see everybody progressing in technique because uh, then i know you guys will be able to do it for the long term and really get strong we got some sumo action this is a deadlift party um, <clears throat> i can already tell this guy's forms are locked in Dude, what are we talking about here, man? Another five-star pull? Do we have another five-star pull? Um, I would actually say the opposite for the neck here. I'd probably try to get those eyes and chin up just a little bit. Your torso is fairly vertical, so looking up on the horizon straight ahead would probably be uh, do really well for you, my friend. The hook grip, I'm digging it. Your lats look like they get nice and tight. Getting those elbows back, um, pointing backwards as much as you can. Squeeze your shoulder. You could probably do that a little better. Um, you're very strong and you get very upright, so you might just forget about your lats. So really squeeze those shoulders down. Get your shoulders as far away from your ears as you can. And I think about, again, bending that barbell around my legs, and in this case, in between your legs, bending, trying to snap it like you'd snap a stick, and getting your elbows pointed backwards behind you. Uh, the other thing I'd say is try to widen your stance. Uh, it won't necessarily be better or worse, but I do think you have the mobility and how you're built that you could uh, widen your stance uh, and maybe reduce some of that range of motion and still be just as strong man five star deadlifts maybe we'll even just title that this uh this video because <clears throat> everything's looking so clean and some of your guys's gyms look sick i wish some of these facilities um are more and more popular i wish more people heard of them because this facility looks dope as well uh, I, I know it's a little bit of routine to get on your heels and kind of force yourself back but again i'd like to see full contact with the foot um, obviously the video is cut off a little bit but everything else looks really solid so i'd like um i do like routine and I, I like someone doing the same thing over and over every rep every set every day uh to build uh the routine and to build the continuity of your lifts but i would prefer to have that foot really driven down because what you can see is your toes rise up a little bit there on the initial pull if it's just during the routine or the setup um, maybe not as big of a deal but if it's during the pull i do think you're losing some balance and you're losing some strength so dig those toes into the ground flatten that foot out and really drive my man here uh it does look a little heavy uh, i think this is a full speed um so it's hard to say if that's 70. Uh, touch and go, typically, as I recommended before, I like the Ed Cone style or a reset because touch and go um, can mess up um, or take advantage of that balance. You tend to be able to do more reps with a higher percentage or a higher intensity. Um, you're really hinging on your low back. We've talked about this a lot. So we, what we need to figure out is probably a higher hip position. Uh, the Ed Cone style deadlift will find you that proper position. Try loosening your belt a little bit. You'll have to lighten the weight, uh, but you're going to have to learn how to breathe and brace a little bit harder because you're really hinging on your erectors which is your low back which is where that belt is placed rather than hinging on our hips and our glutes and the sumo you know i've talked
talked about it a long time ago, but there's kind of two ways to pull depending on how you're built. There's kind of a higher hip and a lower hip position. If you have the mobility, the arm length, and a shorter torso, you can literally almost squat the weight up, um, as in our first gentleman uh, going back. This gentleman's somewhere in between, and the gentleman in between um, is more of a higher hip. You have to kind of hinge. Actually, this form is really solid. I like that right there. I would still call this a higher hip. Um, basically, what I'm saying is if you have a short torso, you can get your knees out and you'll be so upright. All you have to do is flex your quads and your upper body will literally almost be an elevator or a piston going up and down. Uh, a, high, a higher hip deadlift, um, which will actually end up looking more like a conventional uh, just with a wider stance, is you're still hinging on your hips and your torso is going to have to change angles, if that makes sense. Again, the lower hip position is very rare where someone has to be built the right way, the right mobility, and the right strength in their quads to be very upright, and their torso position almost doesn't change at all. You literally just, they just lock out their quads and then a little bit of glute uh, hip extension to finish the lift, where the majority of us will end up pulling like that. Um, and honestly, I wouldn't fix that much, my man. It looks really, really, really solid. It's just about programming from there on, staying consistent, uh, focusing in on that technique over and over, uh, and then getting your nutrition and sleep. I can't mention how much nutrition and sleep will play a role in how you guys look, how you feel, and how you lift. Um, so you can see here, talking about the, the, the sumo higher hip, this is a great hip hinge. He's hinging on his hips, not his low back. You can see him brace the low back and breathe. He has a little bit longer of a torso, even though his arms make up for a little bit, but that's why his hips are so high when you pull. Uh, if you wanted to, you know, the typical conventional where everyone's chest is way up and people say chest up this, often I find that's a bad cue because the majority of us aren't built to pull uh, perfectly and so our hips will have to be higher. Uh, we do overall want our hips lower than our shoulders um, from the starting position and throughout uh, just because that'll give us the best leverage to get the weight moving and to get, uh, otherwise it's just a stiff leg and it may be too much load into our low back and hamstrings. Uh, we do want to get some quad involvement, but if your hips are too low, um, you'll be too far behind the bar for the majority of people. No tension in the hamstrings or glutes. Uh, overall, another four and a half, uh, five star deadlift. Um, it looks really, really, really good. The little torque in the shoulders is something just, um, Kind of nitpicking, but I do think he, you can see him do it right there on that rep a little bit. But I think you can do a little bit more. Get those shoulders away from your ears. Crank that, crank that soldier boy around your knees. I do appreciate you guys. Give this thing a thumbs up. Share it out with your friends. Trying to help as many as you can. I appreciate all the support and positivity, my friends. Have a good day, a good week, a good year. Salam I'm out of here.